All right, Messing with the Kid, a great tune by Junior Wells and probably even made more famous by the Blues Brothers. That's the version we're going to be doing today. This is an excellent tune to practice playing your ninth chord forms that we learned a couple lessons ago. Now this tune pretty much is just a repeating pattern with a couple little variations along the way. We're going to break it down completely part by part, put it back together slowly with the metronome and have you playing this with the backing track. Tune up and let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and break this down. This version of Messing with the Kid is pretty much a 12 bar blues in the key of B. And it's pretty much a standard pattern, except we don't go back to the five chord in the final measure of the blues. Let's take a look at the chord voicings that we're gonna be using. This is a great tune to practice you know, your ninth chords with. We're gonna be using this ninth chord voicing, if you remember from that previous lesson. Right there, that's that really nice ninth chord voicing that puts the root right up there on the high E string. So that is a B9 chord. We're gonna be using that pretty much every time we come to our one chord. For the four chord, we're gonna use our standard nine chord voicing right there. This is an E9. We're gonna play it without the root. Here's your typical E9 chord. We're gonna play it without the root right there. For the five chord, we're just gonna drag that same voicing right up there to the ninth fret for F sharp nine. And the only other chord voicing we're going to be using is just at the very end of the song, and that's just kind of that B9 chord right there. If you don't know that one, make sure you check out the ninth chord in the blues lesson. So really, this is just kind of one pattern that repeats in the song, kind of alternating with the nine chord and that little rhythmic figure there on the box pattern. Okay, but we're going to break this down step by step. We're starting with the intro. The intro is just a very simple melody, starting off on quarter notes on that first measure. The second measure, we play eighth notes, that D note, the B going to the G sharp, and ending back on the root, the B, which we're gonna kinda play staccato. So all together, this is the intro. We're also going to be using that melody in a couple different spots in the song, substituting for our final two measures of the 12 bar blues. We'll get to that soon. So now let's check out the main rhythm of the song that just kind of repeats throughout most of the 12 bar pattern. Now this is not a typical blues shuffle feel that you're probably used to. This is a straight feel. This is more of a funky type of thing based on a 16th note groove. So if you're not used to playing that 16th note strumming type feel, you probably want to check out that lesson first and then come on back here. All right, so starting right on beat one, this is a very common rhythm. We're gonna hit the first strum right on that B9 chord there. Let that first strum ring for the time of the first three 16th notes of the beat, and then catch the up strum on the last 16th note. So it's one E and a. Uh. One E and a. Uh. Make sure you keep that right hand in motion. One E and a. Uh. Next, we're gonna come down on a heavily accented down strum right on beat two and cut it off very short and staccato by releasing pressure. So we have one E and a two. One E and a two. Hit that strum on beat two and release pressure immediately. One E and a two and accent it, really hit it heavy. After that strum right on beat two, you're gonna go down to the A string and hit that F sharp note there on the and of beat two. followed by the A note twice on beat three. Back to the F sharp note. Back to the A. Back to the root, the B note. This is the timing. Now I really recommend you try to keep that hand in motion and follow the picking direction which is on the tab. Again. Now just to make sure we have everything in the right spot, let's play that one bar figure repeatedly with the metronome. Two, three, four. times. So 
So that is the main rhythmic figure of the song. And we're just going to repeat those patterns on the four and the five chords. So it's going to stay on that one chord for the first four measures, just like it would in a typical 12-bar blues. On measure five, we will go up to the four chord. So we're going to go to that E9 voicing right there. And these are the melody notes we're going to play now. The B to the D. Ending on the E right there at the ninth fret. Again. Then back to the one chord. To the five chord. To the one. All right, so that is the main 12 bar pattern that repeats in the song. Let's go ahead and play it with the metronome. One, two, three, four. going to play that pattern for the majority of the song but on the next pass you're going to replace the final two bars of the 12 bar pattern with the intro lick so let me go ahead and demonstrate that now <laughs> Next pass through the changes, there would normally be a guitar solo there. You're just going to play the standard form with the regular 12-bar blues. After that pass, you're going to go back to a verse. Again, just the standard changes. The next section of the song is kind of a breakdown, so lighten up a little bit on your strum, and we're also going to take off the top note of all of our chord voicings. The melody notes are still going to be exactly the same. And at the end of this form, we're going to play that intro lick in the last two bars like we did before. All right, the next section, it goes to a harmonica solo, and we're back to playing our full chord voicings, back to playing it more aggressively. The only thing different here is the last four measures. So when we go to the five chord, we're going to play our F sharp nine, and then we're going to do this melody. Now, if you're kind of keeping your hand moving in 16th notes, those will all be downstrokes on that melody. I'm also kind of playing those notes staccato. Same thing down on the four chord. Then back to the one chord with a normal pattern. Followed by one strum cut off right on beat one of the final measure. So the last four bars of this are. All right, so now we've almost reached the end. After that harmonica solo section, you're gonna go back to the beginning, play a verse form, 
and then play the intro melody at the end of it, just like what we did before. Uh, but you're going to repeat that intro melody three times and then slow it down in the final pass, ending on that B9 voicing up here from the five chord. Repeat that melody. One more time, slow it down. Up to this B9 chord voicing right there. And just kind of get jangly with it on top there. That's kind of optional. And that's the end of the song. So at this point, I really recommend that you practice each one of these sections individually, then put it together very slowly, playing with the metronome, until you can gradually work your way up to the tempo of the backing track at about 80%. 90% then at 100% speed. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it with the backing track right now. What's the anxiety? Oh, there's a whole lot of talk that people say they try to put the kid. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what you did. You can call it what you want, but I call it messing with the kid. Nah, I know. 